Hello class! In relation to positive psychology, our presentation will focus on the different types of meditation. This project was done by Crystal Baruti, Laurent Davidoff, Carla Figueroa, Jessica Martinez, and Daniel Tobar. Here is a layout of the kind that will be discussed in this presentation. First, I will be talking about what meditation is and its benefits. Next, Crystal will talk about one of the various types of meditations known as mindfulness meditation. Following, Daniel will cover reflective meditation. Primordial sound meditation will then be discussed by Carla. Lastly, Jessica will explain Tai Chi. First off, let's begin by discussing what meditation is. The word meditation comes from the Latin word meditare, which means to exercise the mind. The idea of meditation originated in India and began growing popular around its neighboring countries. Throughout the Middle Ages, it became widely spread in Western cultures and also became involved in some religious practices like Judaism. Meditation is considered a way of life rather than a technique and is described as a state of consciousness in which the mind is free. Some sources say that meditation allows for the ability to connect to an inner source of energy because it involves relaxation and rejuvenation. Let's talk about some of the benefits of meditation. In terms of physical benefits, meditation seems to play a role in various factors, such as lowering blood pressure levels, reducing anxiety, decreases in headaches and tension in joints and muscles, and overall improves one's immune system. Mentally, meditation has shown effects in relation to increases in creativity, happiness, and more clarity and peace of mind. It has also shown results in emotional steadiness and harmony. Memory has been found to show improvements as well. Moving on to the brain. When meditation occurs, scientists indicated that a decrease in beta waves occurs. This indicates that the brain is processing information. If an individual were to meditate on a regular basis, anxiety would overall decrease sensations would be ignored, and dangerous situations would be looked at in a more rational perspective. With that being said, without meditation, the brain would be more sensitive to sensations such as pain and anxiety. Meditating also increases concentration and attention in terms of cognitive tasks. In a study, it was found that individuals paid more attention to an object, idea, or activity when they meditated regularly. In terms of addictions, Meditation can be helpful for individuals who are recovering in treatment. One study found that after a 17-week follow-up, individuals who meditated smoked less often. Now that we know how the brain is affected by meditation, let's talk about a few studies that concluded the effects were true. Several years ago, researchers from Harvard conducted a study in which they would be able to determine if meditation had effects on the brain's activity. The study involved 16 participants to be involved in a stress reduction program. MRIs were taken of each participant's brain before and after the eight-week program. During the program, participants were given a recorded video and were asked to meditate for 40 minutes a day at home. After an eight-week period, they found that the gray matter in the brain, located in the hippocampus, significantly changed. This gray matter is associated with processing information and helps with self-awareness. It also provides nutrients to neurons. Another study was conducted by David Cresswell, director of the Health and Human Performance Lab at Carnegie Mellon University. In his study, there were two groups, one that received the treatment and the other that received a placebo treatment. The study involved 35 unemployed women and men participants who were seeking jobs and experiencing stress. Blood was drawn from each participant and brain scans were done as well. Half of the participants received a meditation treatment at a retreat in which focused on bodily sensations. The other half were in treatment in which the instructor encouraged chatter and making jokes during the program. After a period of three days, all the participants concluded that they felt refreshed and feel that they can cope with stress more easily, even the placebo group. However, 
Brain scans were taken after the time frame and results indicated that there was more activity in the brain of the participants who received the actual treatment. Blood was also drawn from all of the participants four months later. The participants that were placed in the treatment group showed lower blood pressure levels than the placebo group. Like mentioned previously, there are different styles and ways to meditate. These will be discussed in the upcoming slides. As Laurent previously mentioned, practicing meditation has a plethora of benefits for oneself. However, did you know that there are different forms of meditation practiced for different purposes? In a moment, we will discuss mindfulness meditation and its purpose. But first, let's talk about what mindfulness is. Psychologist Anjanette Padilla defines mindfulness as the ability to bring one's attention to the experiences occurring around them during that precise moment. Being mindful is being aware of one's current thoughts, emotions, and body movements. For example, right now, I am aware of the way I am sitting at my desk with my legs crisscross on my chair. My breathing is calm and steady, and as I speak, I can feel the vibrations of my voice and I notice my mouth opening and closing as I pronounce each word. Mindfulness is considered a universal human ability, which is used to foster clear thinking and open-heartedness. With that being said, mindfulness meditation is the fundamental practice for the development of mindfulness. Mindfulness meditation began as a Buddhist tradition and originated in South Asia. However, Mindfulness has also been rooted in Jewish, Islamic, and Christian religions as well. Dr. John Kabat-Zinn, a world-renowned scientist and meditation teacher who has incorporated mindfulness into medicine and society, once said that mindfulness means paying attention in a particular way, on purpose, in the present moment, and non-judgmentally. His research on mind and body interactions has contributed to the mindfulness movement. He has taught mindfulness meditation to individuals in hospitals, schools, prisons, corporations, and professional sports, just to name a few. As with the other forms of meditation, the benefits of mindfulness meditation include reducing the negative associations with neuroticism and strengthening both the immune system and the physiological responses to stress and negative emotions, meaning it reduces stress, depression, and anxiety. Mindfulness meditation increases well-being, happiness, and the openness to experience things. Lastly, it improves our social relationships with family, friends, and strangers. It is said that through regular meditation practice, we are able to have a better capacity to maintain mindfulness during our day-to-day -day living. Studies suggest that mindfulness-based meditation actually reduces stress levels and has a variety of health benefits. One study conducted by Grossman, Neiman, Schmidt, and Wallach found that individuals with a wide variety of chronic clinical ailments, such as cancer, anxiety disorders, and depression, were able to cope better once they began practicing mindfulness meditation. Health-related benefits included enhanced emotional processing, better coping regarding the effects of their illness, improved self-efficacy and control, and generally a more optimistic view on enjoying a full and rich life regardless of their illness. Another study conducted by Sherman and Nyklasek determined that mindfulness meditation does in fact enhance your mindfulness skills as well as your total psychological well-being. Now if you can recall, psychological well-being can mean your perceived stress, global mood, and your quality of life. How to do mindfulness meditation. Now meditation is easier said than done. It is actually quite challenging and it takes time, patience, and practice from the individual. Mindfulness meditation is a seated technique that focuses on your breathing, bodily sensations, and your mental relaxation. Those practicing mindfulness meditation should be either sitting on a chair, straight, or cross-legged on the floor in a quiet room. They should be focusing on their breathing. They can do this by focusing on the sensation of air flowing into their nose and out of their mouth, or they can focus on the rise and the fall of their chest as they take their breaths. When practicing this form of meditation, it is normal to become distracted by noises and thoughts. We are human. 
however when this happens we must accept the distraction without judgment and focus our attention back to breathing that is a main goal of mindfulness meditation to accept what happened and move forward how can mindfulness meditation relate to marriage resolution well let's see as previously mentioned mindfulness meditation can reduce stress and anxiety as well as help focus on the current situation at hand therefore creating healthy individual functioning now researchers believe that healthy individual functioning is important to successful marriages let's use an example of a couple who's arguing in order to help that couple resolve a conflict each of them should focus on listening to the other person's perspective until they can repeat what the other person said and fully understand it this would be easier if they participated in mindfulness meditation through mindfulness meditation the couple can actually focus on what is being said rather than picking up on a thing they heard and didn't like instead of reacting they could be listening and processing what their spouse is saying therefore the couple is able to find a resolution and common ground through this method each spouse is present being aware and mindful of themselves and their partner in conclusion through mindfulness meditation spouses are able to communicate and handle conflicts more effectively therefore reducing the chances of divorce hi everyone my name is daniel tovar and i'm going to be talking about re reflective meditation um, which is also known as analytical meditation and you will see why in the coming slides so right away we come into the definition which can easily be categorized by this phrase of disciplined thinking so taking your thoughts um, that go on and really guiding them toward an answer um, an answer to what you may see um, you may think so with all these thoughts you want to focus on a specific topic theme or question that may keep arising or that just suddenly arose um, in your life um, so you want to select a topic question or theme then you want to reflect on that and then you want to train your reflection so the next thing is the next bullet point is when your mind wanders you want to come back to this topic so this comes back to that that thought of training your reflection um, so with reflection, it is a really difficult process sometimes in our mind because it is difficult to hone in on just one thought because there are many so thought there are so many thoughts in our mind. Um, so when your mind wanders on the issues that arise, um, you have to keep coming back and keep training yourself on how to reflect properly, um, especially in this type of meditation. Um, so the more that you practice this coming back to this reflection coming back and coming back the better you'll become at the reflective meditation um, so again practice makes perfect um, some sample topics that you might want to think about um, would be the questions who am i what is the true purpose of my life what is the role in, what is my role in this universe how can i help remove the suffering of others and then just a few topics um, into relationships uh, conflict and maybe your own social consciousness there are a few benefits to this type of meditation so um, first off better understanding of self so uh, you gain a better sense of what your thought processes look like and how to handle certain situations better um, feel a sense of peace and calm so at times um, meditation will be used when people do feel overwhelmed with what is going on in their day um, even in their routine maybe at some point they do feel um, overwhelmed and at that point it's just it's just a really nice go-to exercise to kind of take yourself out of that situation and really evaluate um, more about these certain topics that you think about um, and these topics can even be things that relate to the day that you're having or to um, the racing thoughts that you're having. Um, so then that one would also go hand in hand with gaining insight or solutions. So maybe you have conflict or problems that are arising in your life and you might wanna reflect on um, certain ways on how to fix things or even just like how to better your day or better what has gone on. Um, so yeah, gaining insight and solutions. 
And then the last thing is to better understand other types of meditation. So this, this type of reflective meditation helps us reflect on other types of meditations and what kind of conflicts and issues may, um, may come up during those types of meditations. And lastly, I wanted to go into an example of a typical session. So before you even start your session, you want to choose that topic or that question um, that you have and kind of keep that in the back of your head um, to bring up later. Um, so you would begin meditation as you usually do um, in a site where you feel comfortable and in a place where you know you cannot be disturbed. Um, and then you want to prepare your body for the time that you will devote to this session. Next, you want to achieve mental silence. Um, you want to breathe heavily or breathe deeply. Um, you want to release tension and you want to close your eyes. And then to, you want to try and achieve mental silence for a few minutes. And the goal is to calm the mind to move on to the next step. So after a few minutes of that mental silence, the next step would be uh, focusing on the topic of the session. So what I found online is that it's better to take the mindset of presenting the topic to the mind. Um, you don't want to force thinking about the topic because that's not the purpose of this reflective meditation and that's very forceful. Um, you just kind of want to present it to the mind and also it was recommended that you visualize the answer to the topic and also maybe the origin of the answer. But if you're not able to get an answer in this one session and you do have to come back to it after multiple sessions that you kind of visualize the steps that it takes to get to the answer when you're coming back to that. Um, so when you do feel that the sen session is coming to a conclusion, you wanna again return to that mental silence for a few minutes and then leave the meditative state as you would usually do and um, kind of regain those senses back um, with the real world. Um, and so I want to come back to this, that this idea that not all topics can be solved in one session and sometimes repetition is necessary for some topics and it's okay to not solve this big idea or this big topic in one session but to keep in mind those steps that you are taking and to further those steps in the next sessions. Hello, my name is Carla Figueroa and today I'll be going over primordial sound meditation with you. We'll be covering what it is, how it works and its benefits. For thousands of years, People have used meditation to move beyond the mind's busy activity and emotional turbulence into profound peace and expanded awareness. Primordial sound meditation, also known as PSM, is a silent healing practice that allows us to experience inner calm and deep relaxation. PSM uses a mantra, a specific sound or vibration, which when repeated silently, helps you to enter deeper levels of awareness. The mantra you receive is the vibrational sound the universe was creating at the time and place of your birth. It is calculated following Vedic mathematic formulas and is personal and specific to you. Repeating your personal mantra silently helps you to enter deeper levels of awareness by taking you away from the intellectual side of the brain. The focus is on comfort, and PSM is generally practiced sitting down. In the age of digital devices, social media, and busy schedules, many believe that the restful awareness experienced during meditation is more valuable than ever. The term restful awareness captures the unique combination of physical relaxation and an alert yet quiet mind. The pace of life in 2016 has accelerated tremendously. Every day we are flooded with more information and more stimulation than the ancestors before us encountered during their entire lifetimes. Not surprisingly, the number of people 
suffering from stress, anxiety, insomnia, and chronic health problems is also on the rise. Many people are searching for peace of mind. Primordial sound meditation isn't about forcing your mind to be quiet. It's about experiencing the silence that's already there and making it a part of your life. Individuals who look to meditation as a complete lifestyle believe silence is the birthplace of happiness, creativity, and infinite possibilities. They believe that from this field of pure potential is where we all get our bursts of inspiration and our most intuitive thoughts our deepest sense of connection to ourselves and the universe. Practicing meditation on a daily basis allows you to weave silence and stillness into your mind and body to create a life of greater compassion and fulfillment. PSM teaches that even when your mind is filled with agitated thoughts, you still have access to the inner stillness and calm that lies beneath the choppy surface of thought and emotion. The most direct way to experience inner silence and well-being is through meditation. Meditation is a tool to rediscover the body's own inner intelligence. You may be wondering, what benefits does meditation offer me? in order to enhance my own lifestyle? Well, the answer is simple. Scientific research shows that when you meditate, your breathing slows down, your blood pressure decreases, and hormone levels fall. Studies show that regular meditation can be used to strengthen the immune system as well as release stress and fatigue. In fact, meditating for half an hour provides more psychological rest than a full night's sleep. As you meditate on a regular basis, you will notice an increased sense of well-being as well as greater energy and creativity levels. Today's doctors are increasingly naming stress as a major contributing factor to most illnesses. Even though meditation should not be considered a cure on its own, research has shown meditation to be beneficial for a wide range of health problems. As stress is greatly eliminated through primordial sound meditation, our minds and bodies begin to function with maximum effectiveness, creating health, vitality, as well as happiness. Practicing primordial sound meditation on a regular daily basis can help you to manage stress, reduce anxiety, improve your relationships, create inner peace, awaken your intuition, lower your blood pressure, become less judgmental, connect with your inner spirit, enhance your sleep patterns, and many other benefits. Now that you know what primordial sound meditation is, how it works, and how it can help you, I encourage you to take a chance on meditation. If you are struggling with stress at work, at home, in your relationships, or even in everyday life, I encourage you to learn how to meditate using timeless practice of primordial sound meditation. Learn how to create inner peace in your life. Which brings me to a very special and interesting quote by Dr. Deepak Chopra. Meditation is not a way of making your mind quiet. It's a way of entering into the quiet that's already there, buried under the 50,000 thoughts that the average person thinks every day. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you give primordial sound meditation a second thought. Hello, my name is Jessica Martinez, and my presentation is on Tai Chi meditation. Tai Chi, also known as meditation in motion, 
is a type of martial art. It is an ancient Chinese tradition created by Tuwes monk Zhang Senfeng in the 12th century. Tai Chi consists of five different styles named after the creators of the set of movements. Each style has different levels of difficulty and help different aspects in a person. The purpose of this meditation is to bring awareness of the unchanging center of your being, the consciousness itself. Levels of Tai Chi are concentrated on physical and mental relaxation rather than relaxing your soul. The different styles of Tai Chi are Chen style, Yang style, Wu style, and Sun style. The foundation of Tai Chi is set on the energies of Qi and the elements of Yin and Yang. Tai Chi encourages the proper flow of Qi through the body and promotes balance between opposing elements of Yin and Yang. The practice begins with a warm-up consisting of stretching, body rotation, and breathing. As the meditation begins, the eyes lead to the body, waist control, and the hands follow your body through the different styles of movements. Meditation is simultaneously followed by Zhang Zhang, which is known to be heavy concentration of exercise, and Qi Gong, which is gentle breath work combined with movements. Some of the benefits that Tai Chi brings is it promotes health and fitness, strengthens immune system, it helps emotional and psychological well-being, relieves stress and builds self-confidence, and lastly, it helps discover internal energy. In the concept of divorce, both individuals go through stress, health problems, and self-esteem issues. Personally, it can affect spiritually, mentally, and physically. With the help of Tai Chi meditation, inner peace confidence and clarity can all be obtained during this troublesome time. There are different styles of Tai Chi that target specific areas such as stress, anxiety, depression, and health problems. The overall goal of meditation in movement is to find and recognize the Tai Chi in your mind, where differentiation come together and become one. Tai Chi is considered to be safe for all age groups. It is painless and has great outcomes. Anyone can try it out, even those who have never worked out. San Feng, the creator of Tai Chi, is thought to have said, in every movement, every part of the body must be light and agile and strung together. The postures should be without break. Motion should be rooted in the feet, released through the legs, directed by the waist, and expressed by the fingers. Substantial and insubstantial movement must be clearly differentiated.